All right, here's our last video for this chapter, 7-7, seven, seven, solving right triangles. Now, solving right triangles is going to involve the process of finding the measures of all the sides and angles. So you'll have some information, but you're going to have to find everything else that's missing. Any side length or any angle measurement is what we'll be on the hunt for. Now, to solve a right triangles, we're going to either know one of two things. We're going to know two side lengths, or we're going to know one side length and one acute angle. So that means we're going to have to find everything else, either using Pythagorean theorem, trigonometry, or this new piece of trig for you guys called the inverse trig ratios. Now inverse trig ratios are used only when you want to find out how many degrees there are in an angle, which means you're going to have side data. And you're going to have information about two sides. Now just some vocabulary here, the inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent, they have another way of describing them. And sometimes you'll hear math teachers use these other words to describe them. So those other words that we're going to use, you might hear people say inverse sine, or you might hear them say arc sine. You might hear them say inverse cosine or arc cosine, or inverse tangent or arc tangent. If you hear that phrase, they're just interchangeable. So I just want you guys to be aware of it. Now the other cool thing about this is this is going to be the chapter where we're going to get to use these buttons over here on the calculator. We're finally going to be able to take a look at arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent, which we get to by hitting the second key and then the appropriate trig function. So more on that later. To go ahead and work with this problem, we're going to take a look at using a calculator to approximate the measure of angle A the nearest tenth of a degree. So I can see that I've got side CB and I have side BA. I don't have anything else. So what I'm going to do is actually list the pieces that I have to find. I've got to find angle A, I've got to find angle C, and I also have to find the length of side AC. So those are going to be the pieces that I have to find. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of make a, a little key right there underneath the triangle because then I'll go ahead and do my work for that. Now to work with our calculator, we want to make sure our calculator is set up A in the right mode and all of these problems in this section, they're all going to be going to the tenths place. So what I want you to do is hit your mode button and make sure that your screen and my screen match. You want the calculator set to degree and in, into the tenths place. So that's what that's going to look like in your, in your graphing calculator. Now, to find angle A, so I'm going to take a look here at angle A. Based on where angle A is, right here, this side over here, side CB, that's the opposite. And the one right next to it, right here, this 20, is adjacent. So what I'm going to do is pick my trig function that's going to help me figure that out. That involves opposite and adjacent, and that is going to be my tangent function. So what I'm going to do then is write the following to find the measure of angle A. I'm going to write tangent of A, because I don't know what angle A is yet, but I know that ratio is 15 to 20. Now the next step, because we're not going to get the calculator involved just yet, we're going to do arc tangent or inverse tangent. So tan negative 1, and then we're going to take that ratio, 15 over 20. And that's going to give angle A. So now that I've got that set up, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to go back to my home screen, and I'm going to hit second, and then the tangent button. And that's going to give me my arc tangent. And my ratio is 15 divided by 20. The measure of angle A is going to be 36.9 degrees for the measure of angle A. So that's the first piece that I found. So that's 36.9 degrees. Now to find the measure of angle C, what I'm going to do is use a triangle sum theorem. So I know that this angle right here, I just found that is 36.9. So the other two, the other angle is going to be 180 minus 90 minus 36.9. That's going to give me the measure of angle C. So I'll just key that into my calculator and figure out what that value is, if you need to do that. When I do that, I end up with a value of 53.9. For the measure of angle C. So that's 53.1. Now what I want to do to check that is I'm going to take angles A and C and add them up. 
they had better have a sum of 90. If they do, then that means I did this problem correctly. If not, then I messed up either when I found angle A or when I was finding angle C. So the sum of those two angles should be 90 because they are complementary angles. Now to find the missing side, to find the length of AC, that is what we're going to use Pythagorean Theorem for because I have two sides of a right triangle so I'm just trying to find the missing side. And I'm going to let side AC be represented by the letter X. Alright, so to find that, now I've got to take a look at what X is. Is that side, is it going to be one of the legs of the hypotenuse? So since that's a hypotenuse, that's going to kind of help me get my Pythagorean Theorem organized. So I'm going to have X squared is going to be equal to 15 squared plus 20 squared. X squared equals now 15 squared is 225 and 20 squared is 400. When I add them up, my sum is 625. And then when I square root that, because remember we're going to take the positive square root of 625, I end up with 25. So AC has a length of 25. So when I'm all done, I want to make sure that these pieces right here, that's all the information that I was asked to find, and I, those were all the missing pieces, so I found all of those. So just to summarize here a little bit, to find angle A, we use trig. To find the other angle, the other acute angle, I use the triangle sum theorem. And lastly, to find the hypotenuse, the missing side, I use the Pythagorean theorem, because I was given two sides in my right triangle. Now next, we're going to take a look at another example, but this time, we're going to have A and B being acute right angles in a triangle. He's calculated approximate the measures of A and B the nearest tenth of a degree. So this is just going to be button pushing here in the calculator. And with this, here's what I want you to do first so you understand how to push the buttons in there. Now, for sine of A equaling 0 0.87, you're going to write sine negative 1 of 0 0.87 equals the measure of angle A. And then we'll push the buttons and see what that gives us. Same thing for cosine of B. We're going to write down arc cosine or inverse cosine of 0.15. It's going to give us the measure of angle B. The next thing we'll do is we'll hit those buttons in our calculator and come up with those values. So go ahead and do that and see what you come up with. Again, we're rounding to the tenth place, which our calculator was nice enough to set up for us. So how'd you do with that? Hopefully, you got the same values I did. If not, be sure to double check your mode and make sure you're in degree mode and your calculator is set to round to the nearest tenth of a degree, as you can see in the left hand side where the graph and calculator is displayed. And that's it for example two. Pretty easy stuff, but I want you to make sure that you show your writing so it looks just like it is on the screen. Alright, so that's the end of examples one and two. Be sure you tune in for the next two examples, three and four, and the video that comes after this one. Thanks for watching, and you guys have a great day. Peace.